Good afternoon, good afternoon, people. Uh, today we are blessed. We are blessed with some people who are going to talk to us about some amazing technology. And what is interesting is today I have an old lady crew, old lady crew from DT and Cisco. And we'll be talking about SD1. A lot of you guys have been uh, in this space for a while. And when the pandemic hit, networks were, you know, people could not stay in the house, could not go to the offices. And therefore, guys had to start thinking about working from home and creating an environment where networks were secure even when you're working from home. So this has changed the way we look at networking and, and our systems and our networks and our applications uh, to, a, to a point where it's almost become natural for us to think that, you know, the LAN within our offices uh, used to be something that, you know, you see and you, uh, you know, you, you, you think about security as when you go into the business. But now you can work from anywhere securely uh, without thinking about people interrupting or getting into your networks, etc., etc. Anyway, my name is Hari Hare. Uh, I am the uh, co-founder and the content director at DX5. And today we are really excited to be hosting this session uh, on SD1, uh, sponsored by DTE and Cisco. Uh, we hope that uh, this will sort of give you an, an understanding of why you should be thinking about SD1, uh, why people are preferring SD1 to the normal traditional networks and uh, some of the many benefits uh, that come with it. So today I have uh, interesting people. So I have Florence uh, from DTE, I have Lucy from Cisco uh, and I have Paris also from DTE. Uh, and they'll be talking to us about different things as we move on. They will introduce themselves better than, than what I've done. But what I want us to do today, this afternoon, I want us to participate. I want us to listen, but I also want us to, to be able to engage uh, with, with the different speakers. Uh, so as always, you have the chat function there. Please go into the chat uh, and the, go into the chat. Uh, give us your ideas. If you have a question, there's a Q&A button. Uh, go into the Q&A button. Ask your questions. We will try our level best to respond uh, to all those questions. Uh, not me, the people who know. <laughs> okay, uh, so we'll try to respond to all the questions that, uh, that you guys um, ask. The idea here is we don't want you to leave this room and then go and ask, what was that about? No, 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 ask all your questions. There's no stupid question. All questions are valid. Uh, so please, 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 make sure that you, um, you you ask all the questions you have. And if you need to contribute, contribute. There's a chat function, so contribute, uh, so that we can also, you know, we can learn from each other. This is about networking. It's about virtual learning. It's about understanding the space and educating ourselves. We need to better ourselves every day, and therefore we need to, to keep on learning. The thing about SD1 that, you know, I like most is, you know, as a business, you need to always think about reliability. You know, you want to be reliable, you want to be dynamic. So, so these are some of the things that, you know, our speakers today uh, will, be, will, be, will be talking about. So um, as a, you know, I can't stand here talking about SD1 and not talking about uh, D, DX5. You all know about DX5 and our merger. Uh, so we used to be CIO, uh, CIO Africa, then we merged with Rebel Elements, and now we're DX5. It's the same, it's, we are the same people, uh, only that we are now expanding to other roles, um, you know, including the CEO, the CFO, the CMO. Uh, so we're not just talking about the CIOs and, and, and that line uh, of function. So we, 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 are, we are talking to more people because we believe digital transformation is no longer it's no longer a thing that only the technical people are talking about. 
you know, we need to bring in the, C the CFO so that they can hear the discussions. Uh, so that when you, when you put in a budget request to redo your traditional network to an SD1, then they don't ask you too many questions. Yeah, because they understand, because we've told them, we've spoken to them, and therefore they understand what it is. Yeah, when we go to the CEO and, uh, you know, you want to refresh your entire hardware, they understand why you're doing that. Or you want to move to the cloud, they understand what you, why you're doing that. So that's why we, 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 we started looking at digital transformation as a more inclusive discussion and therefore bringing in all those roles that actually, uh, you know, make the decisions around, under, around uh, digital transformation. So I won't take too much of your time. Today is a day where we're talking about networks, enterprise networks. And without too much ado, I want to invite Paris uh, to come and uh, give us her presentation. Paris Karibusana. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Perez Omondi. I'm an account manager at Down to Earth Technologies. I take care of the FSI sector. So I'm going to do a brief overview of Down to Earth before handing over the session to my colleague, Florence. So DTE is one of the IT, uh, leading IT companies in Kenya. And we were formed uh, way back in 2011 as a technology infrastructure provider. So one of the core values at DTE is customer satisfaction where we get to understand the business needs of the customer, we get to understand their pain points and challenges, and then map out uh, different solutions to take care of those various pain points. So physically, we are located in Nairobi, Kenya, but we have presence in countries like Uganda, Tanzania, Mauritius, uh, Somaliland, and Djibouti. Our people, we, we really pride ourselves in having very highly skilled and uh, professional uh, personnel. So in-house currently we have 30 plus staff and out of those 20 plus are highly certified in different areas. Like we have CCIEs, we have MCSEs and we have experts in the different uh, vendors that we actually offer at DTE. Amongst that, we also have different subcontractors around the country because we serve areas that are far and wide. Those subcontractors help us to service most of our SLAs around, around the country. So when I say DTE is a technology infrastructure provider, what exactly do I mean? This means we offer end-to-end -end ICT solutions that are basically uh, handling all the day-to-day -day infrastructure of any client's uh, network. So the first thing we do is networking and physical infrastructure. So think about maybe a brand new office, think about uh, relocating a server room. So things like structured cabling, things like uh, bid building management systems such as um, biometric solutions, CCTVs and cameras, all those are handled under, under, under that particular department. Then of course we have our next generation data centers. So think of a public, private and hybrid kind of data uh, cloud a hyper-converged kind of system. All that is handled under our next gen generation, actually the compute department. So things also like uh, server virtualization and uh, cloud storage, cloud backup. Then what will all this mean to us if you do not have cybersecurity? Remember COVID came and then work from home uh, brought, uh, brought on a, uh, a different mode of work. So we get people working in different areas, people working from home, connecting in different devices. So we actually handle the whole cybersecurity, network security, cloud security under this particular uh, section. So remember things like privilege access management, multi-factor authentication, firewalls, penetration testing and vulnerability assessments. And then on top of that, we do all the applications that we have on day to day. So your email systems, what do you use to sort email solutions, uh, ERPs and CRMs, all that under one place. So essentially that is exactly what we do at DTE, offering end-to-end -end ICT solutions. So we'll do your networking, setting up a brand new uh, 
environment, and then we'll supply you with the servers and the different equipment that are required. Then we'll protect the cybersecurity, and then, of course, all your applications on top of that. So what will that mean for us if we do not have our technology partners? So DTE, we have an ecosystem of the biggest players within the industry that help us to offer these uh, services to our clients. So cybersecurity, we have people like Cisco, Infoblox, uh, Palo Alto, and Fortinet. And then the structure, uh, physical uh, infrastructure, things like Simone, Microsoft for the different software as a service applications that we offer. So this, this slide actually shows you the ecosystem that we formed as data uh, down to earth. And then we are able to play with the biggest uh, technology partners within the industry to offer these services to you. So uh, this uh, we, is just a showcase of some of the partnership levels that we have. For Cisco, we are a premier partner, Microsoft Gold, VMware and advanced partner. So you can just take a second to uh, look at the slide and see the various uh, partners that we are currently have and our different partnership levels. Our, our main presentation today is about Cisco SD1. So this means that we actually have to talk about our Cisco partnerships. And uh, remember down to earth, uh, Cisco was one of the major, uh, it was one of the flagship, yeah, flagship vendors. So it forms a core part of the solutions of DTE. So currently we are a Cisco premier partner, but working actively in, uh, to becoming a gold partner. We are advanced partners in enterprise and networking security, uh, service, uh, advanced service provider, and of course, a SaaS partner. So uh, you'll understand when I say end to end, we also serve most of the industries within the, 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 IT, uh, the IT sector. So we have service providers. Of course, the commercial sector give, uh, that holds things like manufacturing, transport, transportation and SMEs, government and parastatals, and of course, financial services. And then what would we be if we do not have some of the success stories or clients and brands that we have worked with over the years? These are just, this showcases some of the clients that we've worked with, Central Bank of Kenya, KCB, Djibouti, all the way in Djibouti, some cable in Somaliland. So this actually just shows a track record of some of the brands we've worked with. So when you're on board with DTE means that you are in safe hands and we are able to deliver what we have promised. So uh, just showcasing some of the recent projects that we have. We are currently servicing a three-year network and maintenance support uh, for National Bank of Kenya. So we handle all their 88 branches across the country. So this can take us back to the slide where I spoke about our people, hence the 15 plus subcontractors. So they help us to maintain all the SLAs we have around. And remember, this is just a, a slide showcasing some of them. We also have uh, the same kind of SLAs with clients outside of Kenya. So we also have different subcontractors in those areas. Of course, we are great on giving back. So this just showcases some of the CSR activities that we do. Currently, we have a three agreement and we are sponsoring our local hockey team. They are called Western Jaguars. You can join us anytime to watch one of their local matches. And of course, we also offer a student uh, scholarship. We have a scholarship fund where we just uh, fund the education of different uh, students across the country. Yeah, so that was just my brief introduction. At least I hope you have an overview of what Down to Earth is. So maybe the key takeout, remember, we are a technology infrastructure provider. So we do end-to-end -end ICT solutions and systems integration. And then the second one, our very experienced and highly qualified personnel. The third one, the great ecosystem of partners that we have, technology partners, most of the biggest players in the industry. And of course, the fourth one, our track record of all the clients that that you've dealt with, meaning that you'll be safe while working with the DTE. Thank you very much. Keep engaging with us. That was my time. Back to you in studio. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25? In 50? Let's be here and here with her and him and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. 
promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house, zero carbon, zero waste. Because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Good afternoon, good afternoon. So we are next, uh, we're going to look at the technical side of SD1. And today we have Florence, Florence Munene, who is a technical manager at DTE down to us. I, you know, I'm so used to calling it DTE. Sometimes I forget it's actually down to earth technologies. Yeah, so DTE uh, and, and, and Florence will take us through an overview uh, of SD1. Florence Karibusana. Uh, thank you so much, Perez, also for introducing DTE. And uh, that's a good story that you've given us from where we've come from since 2011. So uh, my name is Florence Munene, and I'm the technical manager for Down to Earth Technologies. And I'm pleased to be your overview presenter for today for SD1. I don't know how many of you have heard of SD1 before today or those who have not heard of SD1 before today, uh, we have a poll question that we are running. You can give us a few answers before I give you the definition of SD1. Okay. We've gotten enough answers. So how many... Um, Do you know how many? Okay, so as we wait for the poll to, to continue running, uh, today I was going, I'm going to give you the introduction of what ST1 is. So looking at the world post COVID and even as things were going on today, the way we, the way we work today has greatly changed. Before we used to go to the office and you have a machine that is there with a CPU and everything is on that machine. But today things have changed a lot. We've got an increased number of mobile users who are using their mobile phone or their laptops. People who are working from anywhere, not to mention the wearables that we have in terms of IoT. And also the increase of IoT has also led to more devices connecting to the internet. We have um, IoT examples are like your watches, cameras, lighting in your offices. Even some people have fridges that order food. From, from their offices when they run low. So uh, uh, post COVID, modern work has become that whatever you do is what, you, what your work is, it's not where you do it. So most people are not going to the offices anymore. They work from home and they can work from anywhere. Um, most businesses are also, are also looking at clouds as a strategy for, their, for moving forward in their business. It's a major contributor to how they're doing business. And larger part of the businesses have increased users and more mobile users and also people who are using wearables and all that. And all these things need to connect to the internet. Not to mention that they are consuming a lot of bandwidth and you have uh, mission critical activities and applications, sorry, and you also have uh, applications that are not uh, mission critical like social media, maybe streaming media, people who want to download a few things from the internet that are not critical to your business. But how do you still make sure that whatever is critical in your business is getting the best quality of service? And unlike the other 
um, maybe Facebook might not need so much of the bandwidth that you're using in your in your environment. Um, with all these changes and moving to the cloud, more users, more devices and all that, uh, we have seen that internet connectivity has become quite business critical. And as that happens, we have an increased uh, landscape that has led to more exposure to cyber threats. Then we have inconsistent user experience where you, if you're using only maybe one link and you're backholing all your traffic to the MPLS link that you have, uh, there'll be inconsistent user experience because if everyone is using the same link, that means that some applications are going to suffer unlike the others. There's also an increased uh, complexity when you, all this happens because you have, maybe you have a uh, uh, hundred branches and people have uh, each person in, like in the room I'm in right now, I'm sure each one of us maybe has like four devices connected to the internet. So already provisioning for all those um, sessions for one user uh, leads to complexity, not to mention how many applications you are using per day. There's a lot of uh, complexity that is going on. So uh, with all this, uh, SD1 has come in to give some solutions to all these issues. And the next slide now gives the definition for what SD1 is. So if you've not heard of SD1 before, SD1, the easiest, to, the easiest way to define it is to define it with its name. SD1 is a software defined approach to managing your your wide area network. That means we, now we are using um, uh, software and we are using logical mapping. So we have overlay as Lucy is going to look at because she's going to go deeper into this more on what Cisco is offering in terms of SD1. But the key advantages that you should take away from today if anything, uh, you can look that SD1 is going to reduce your cost because uh, now you can start using other links instead of just MPLS. There will be optimized uh, user experience and efficiency when we look at um, opt uh, when we look at doing quality of service so that we can route um, mission critical and uh, business critical uh, applications through the better links. And then there is also simpler operations because of using um, a single. You'll have a single management. You can manage on the cloud or on prem, and the automation also simplifying and simplifies and makes makes it better in ease of use. So for today, we are, in, we are going to be discussing the intent-based networking for branch end one that comes that Cisco is offering. And this is um, what you might be wondering. So what is uh, intent-based networking for the branch? So simply, it's um, an architecture that is based on Cisco digital, archi digital network architecture, something we've commonly called uh, Cisco DNA, if you've heard of that, Cisco DNA. And this is this architecture is, is constantly learning, adapting, and protecting. That means security was inbuilt from the beginning as this was being developed. And um, uh, it has five pillars, uh, five pillars of this that also Lucy is going to look more into per pillar. So the pillar, the pillar that I like to speak more mostly towards is the integrated security. So uh, security for SD1 from Cisco was inbuilt, started from the beginning, and it's not an afterthought. Then there will be more quality of experience, as I talked on it before, where you have um, better connectivity. If you're doing SaaS applications, users can connect directly from, from the branch. Directly, they connect to the internet instead of backhauling all that traffic back to the HQ. Then there will be centralized management and managing it from cloud endpoint flexibility and all this Lucy is going to look at before. So um, uh, to help in deploying a, a, um, one key point takeaway for today, I want you to take away from this uh, is Gartner's uh, basic SD1 capabilities. As I spoke to them before, but now this is what I would like you to take away from this. It's uh, doing load balancing. So if you're using more than one link, you can do load balancing between the links and you can also decide to use just one link and use the other one if the other one fails. So there is load balancing for the links that you're going to be using. You can do direct internet access as I spoke on before, where you can have your users at the branch directly connecting to the internet for their SaaS applications and everything else that is mission critical and needs more security or if you centralize security at the HQ, you, you, if you decentralize uh, security at the, at the branch, you do direct internet access 
if you want more security or you want to check other things on your in, on your traffic you can also backhaul everything to the mpls but now sd1 is here and it's secure to assist you to do direct internet access uh, for your applications directly from your branch centralized management you'll have a single management on the cloud together with orchestration and the best thing that the icing on the cake is reduction of the cost because now you're not using uh, the expensive links for MPLS alone, but only maybe for a few applications. And we've seen a reduction in cost by 38%. And there's also reduction in implementation for SD1 with Cisco with 58%. So uh, not to mention the downtime. And now, I don't know whether you have budgets for SD1 in your coming year, or maybe today we are going to make you get to make a budget for it. But uh, you can answer us that simple question on the poll. Tell us whether you're going to have um, a budget or you have a budget for SD1 in the coming years. And then after that, uh, Lucy is going to take us through more deeply into SD1 and what SD1 is all about. And that what Cisco is offering. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Florence. There, uh, I like, I like, I like the way you're already talking budgets because it's important. We need to find those budgets, and we need to help uh, all our, uh, our our technical people to actually be able to um, to 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 get budget for what they want to do. Uh, but you know, and this is like what I was saying earlier about having these communications uh, with some of the people that, you know, hold those budgets. So we need to start talking to those people, the CFOs, the CEOs about budgets for SD1. And now we are going to have a presentation. This is probably our longest presentation. Then we'll go into, into a Q and A. Uh, and the presentation is going to be done by none other than Lucy Bogua. And Lucy Mbugwa is the systems systems is a systems engineer at Cisco. Uh, so I'll give it to Lucy to proceed. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here today. My name is Lucy Mbugwa. I'm a channel transformation engineer at Cisco covering Sub-Saharan Africa. Today I'm here to talk to you about Cisco SD1. To start us off, it is key for us to understand what do we mean by software-defined um, concept? So software-defined networking as a concept started off sometime in 2008, and uh, different vendors in the industry have implemented it differently. So at Cisco, we started off in the data center. So our software-defined data center started off with a solution we call uh, ACI. ACI stands for Application-Centric Infrastructure. Then we came in into the campus with what we call software-defined access, and now we've taken it to the wide area network with what we call a software-defined wide area network. It is key for us to understand what changes in the industry have led us to where we are today. So of course, given that we are just coming from a pandemic, we've seen the rise of the mobile user or the remote worker. In addition to this, we've also seen um, the increase in the use of uh, personal devices, users coming with them into the corporate environment. We've also seen adoption of software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, where um, enterprises are now consuming services of the cloud. And of course, with these changes happening in the industry, it is key for users um, to be able to rethink how we enforce security, how we enforce consistent policy, how we ensure that users are connecting to whatever resources it is that they require and connecting securely. So with this in mind, of course, the internet becomes a critical tool to enable this transformation that is taking place. But as we consider adoption of software as a service, consumption of services from the cloud, of course, there are certain um, issues that arise with that. Because for one, we need to consider security. Because the more you open up your network, then it means you're increasing the attack surface for malicious people to be able to uh, compromise the network. Subsequently, with users accessing resources from different areas, some on-premise, others outside, others working from home, then it means that it is also critical for IT teams 
to be able to enforce a very consistent user experience, regardless of where a user is accessing resources from. And all these combined brings in an added complexity for IT teams to be able to ensure that uh, their users can connect securely, have a very good experience, and everything is working optimally. So these are some of the challenges that Cisco comes in to address with our solution that we call Viptela. And um, in this, we are bringing about uh, things to do with um, software as a service uh, optimization so that users can very easily access whatever services they require optimally with a very good experience. And of course, we know today in the industry, the costs of internet links are quite expensive. Take a look, look at MPLS. Most of the time you find that as a customer, you have two links, a primary link and a secondary link. And at every given time, you have to pay for both links, even if you're not using both of them. So with this solution, we are able to br bring in the capabilities for you to be able to leverage both links and as well as load balance your traffic across the two. In addition to that, we know the challenges with um, organizations having to break out to the internet from HQ because that backhauling of traffic creates an issue where applications are competing for bandwidth. So with our SD1 solution, you can be able to leverage direct internet access from the branch or from um, home in terms of uh, remote workers. And to be able to manage the complexity that comes about with all these um, solutions, we also offer a centralized dashboard for management and orchestration of SD1 capabilities. And ultimately, looking at the costs of MPLS, we are here to be able to enable you to be able to leverage different transports uh, available. And um, as you do this, we are able to ensure that you're able to save costs because why should you pay for two links and yet at a time you use one link? There are other ways in which we can um, be able to advise you to leverage both links but bring down um, the cost of, of um, operations. Now, so our Cisco SD1 solution brings in a number of capabilities. For one, we are able to bring in transport independence. Here is where we enable you to be able to leverage the different forms of transport available. And I'll talk about this in a moment. Secondly, we're able to ensure that your users have a guaranteed um, experience, quality of experience as they access uh, resources, whether on premise or outside of the network. And of course, as I mentioned, security is a key concern. We're able to bring in security within the solution so that uh, you can be at peace knowing that your users can connect to the cloud, to whatever other platforms they need to connect to securely. And then of course, um, endpoints uh, come in because there are devices located in each of these places that your users are connecting uh, from. So whether it's a physical device or a virtual device, we can be able to provide that. And of course, for ease of uh, management, we have a centralized dashboard that can be able to help you with that. So we'll delve deeper a bit into each of these uh, capabilities uh, for you to be able to see what Cisco SD1 can deliver for you. Now, I've just talked about transport independence. Today, besides MPLS, we do have other forms of transport available. Satellite is an option, 3G, 4G, and even broadband internet. So, with this in mind, um, all we are trying to uh, bring to you with this SD1 solution is enable you to be able to leverage either of these securely. And in this case, it could be, for example, leverage uh, one MPLS link and probably consider internet for a secondary link. But for this to happen, there are other aspects that we may need to look at. And some of these measures will be some of the capabilities that Cisco SD1 provide that you'll be looking at because for you, for, a, for, a, for you to be able to use any of the transports available, there are certain metrics that we look at for each of these links to ensure that it will guarantee the optimal user experience that you're trying to provide for your users. Now, looking into the user experience, our Cisco SD1 solution is able to give you visibility onto all your applications and infrastructure across your wide area network. What does this mean for you? This means that for each of the links available, we're able to look at how is this application performing in each of these links. And then of course, provide you with analytics um, and information that can be able to inform you to make best, better decisions when you're trying to determine which link is the best link um, for which kind of application. Because we've seen, for instance, looking at the financial sector, of course, core banking traffic is very critical. 
that application is very critical to the operations of a bank. And of course, it's key for you to ensure that you guarantee very good quality of experience when that application is in use. So with this, we're able to look at all these transports available and ascertain in terms of the certain metrics we look at, for instance, loss, jita, bandwidth. And looking at these metrics, in addition to other metrics that um, traditional routing protocols look at, then we're able to determine, okay, this is the best uh, link for this kind of traffic and so, so on. So that ensures that at any time, um, whatever application is being used, the user really gets a very good experience. Now, a challenge that we've had with um, the traditional setup as is, we find that um, the traffic usually from the branches is backhauled all the way to HQ, and then from HQ, then it breaks out to the internet. So as I'd mentioned, this brings in an element where applications are competing for the available bandwidth. And for us to be able to optimize how um, your applications perform and how the experience is for your users accessing different software as a service um, platforms, then with software as a service optimization and with that direct internet access we are bringing in from the branch, then we ensure that uh, your users are able to connect to whatever resources they require securely and optimally because um, then they won't be competing with bandwidth with other applications. And all these applications are not backholding all traffic to HQ to break out into the internet. Something very beautiful we've done with our partnership with Microsoft is we've, uh, with a, a capability that we call cloud on-ramp within our SD1 solution, you can be able to set up workflows to be able to connect to different software as a service platform. And this is not restricted just to Office 365, but a test that was done uh, by Cisco, it showed that we saw a 40% uh, better performance uh, when our users were using Office 365. So this means that we are able to improve and better the quality of experience for your users accessing uh, your resources. So I've just talked about, about the cloud on-ramp. So here, what are we doing? I've talked about path selection where we're able to probe and look at the different links available and ensure that whatever link that is being used to access um, a certain uh, to, to transport a, a certain um, certain traffic or access a certain application meets the minimum threshold met for that. And of course, it also uh, enables you to be able to break out directly uh, into the um, internet from a branch uh, for a remote worker from home. And in addition to that, give you visibility onto the quality of experience for your users and how the different links are performing. This really helps you to be able to improve the experience of your users. Now. Some of the capabilities that we bring about um, for us to be able to better and provide um, the quality of experience, we bring about um, application uh, SLA. And here is where we bring about concepts like application, application aware routing. And I'll talk a bit about it in a, um, in a few. We also talk about TCP optimization, forward error correction, and packet duplication. All these capabilities are set to improve how your application performs across the links that you have available. When you talk about application aware routing, this basically means that uh, we are able to track the network and the path characteristics of the data plane tunnel. So these are your links between the devices. And then that way we are able to compute which path is optimal for which kind of data. And as you can see here, we're able to look at the latency, the loss, and the jitter. And this is in addition to those other factors such as route prefixes that are um, usually used when you're using the traditional uh, routing protocols. So in this case, for each of the applications, and this is done from a centralized dashboard, you are able to set my minimum threshold for latency, for loss, and for jitter. So what this means is for each of these links available, whether you have an MPLS link, an internet link, is it a 3G, 4G? Uh, we've seen um, an increase in uh, 3G, 4G use, especially for ATMs in, in the banking environment. So for as long as any of these link meets these thresholds are set for latency loss and jitter, then it means that we can be able to send our traffic through any of those links available. So that is how you can really benefit from application aware routing. Now, secondly, we also look at forward error correction. What does this mean? So forward error correction is a mechanism that we use to be able to do uh, recovery. So when you have lost packets on a link, 
um, how do you how are you able to recover whatever it is that have been lost? So the way we do it is we send an extra parity back, uh, packet for every group of packets sent out. And for as long as the receiver receives um, a subset of packets in that group and the parity packet, then we are able to recover the packets that may have been lost um, in, in, in when we're sending uh, the traffic. So this really helps to ensure that um, there is very minimal packet loss and especially for critical applications. Now, the second thing is on packet duplication. So packet duplication ensures that uh, you also overcome packet, packet loss in that um, you know, where you have two links available, we send uh, copies of the, the packets in each of the links. And then at the receiving side, the duplicates of the packets are dropped and then the packet is um, reconstituted on the other end. So this helps you to be able to uh, overcome packet loss uh, for critical applications. In addition, we also have TCP optimization. So TCP optimization is a feature that helps us to be able to fine tune the process of TCP data traffic so that we can decrease the round trip latency and be able to improve throughput. So at Cisco, we recommend that you configure TCP optimization on both routers, that is uh, the one close to the client and the one close to the server. And as you can see here, TCP optimization is focused on uh, managing uh, congestion. We just talked about packet duplication and forward error correction. That focuses on packet loss. So this coupled with TCP optimization, then we are able to ensure that um, uh, your application quality of experience is really optimal. Now, security is a key concern. As I've mentioned, opening up the branches or the remote worker to access, uh, to break out directly into the internet and access corporate resources from wherever it is that they are poses a security risk. So to be able to mitigate against that, at Cisco, we've brought in firewalling capabilities onto your edge devices. So on the same device that you are able to help you uh, leverage the SD1 capabilities, we bring in the firewalling capabilities. Things like intrusion prevention, and here we use SNOT, SNOT engine as our IPS engine. Um, and then we also bring in URL filtering as well as um, DNS security and um, secure internet gateway. So with these capabilities combined, then you're safe to um, break out to the internet securely. And in addition to that, we are also able to um, extend whatever policies you set from on-premise all the way into the cloud. Now, our security is enforced uh, leveraging Talos. Talos is one of the largest, world's largest global threat intelligence organization. And their work purely is, you just have a team of engineers whose work is to look into what threats exist in the industry, and uh, they are able to test them out in, um, in um, sandbox environment. And then they are able to come up with intelligence that informs not just our uh, SD1 appliances, but also informs all the security um, solutions that Cisco has to offer. So with this intelligence, then you're a guaranteed threat pro protection, even in the day of zero day malware that we've seen wreak havoc in um, a number of enterprises today. Now, I talked about centralized management. So, and of course, um, if you look at the challenge with um, configuration today, well, some of the enterprises are still doing this on CLI. So it poses quite um, a lot of uh, complexity, uh, especially because it may be prone to human error uh, for you to make changes. They have to be planned for and things like that. So with our centralized management da dashboard, coupled with the capabilities that come with our SD1 uh, appliances that help you to be able to have what we call zero touch provisioning. This is why you quickly set up with very little administrative uh, interference. So we have access to a central dashboard user interface where you can be able to configure and manage um, and troubleshoot all these different um, devices that are operating in the SD1 setup. And then in addition to this, you can be able to track your applications, you can be able to track your links from this central dashboard, as well as get analytics on how to better um, and improve um, the operations of your SD1 environment. So this is where the SD1 analytics comes in. So, and in this case, you're able to be able to play uh, what if scenarios. So play around with different metrics. How about if we change this and that? How does this application perform, et cetera, et cetera. 
So, and this now can be leveraged when you want to make changes in the future. And in addition to this, as you can see, we are looking at the network, we are looking at the application, and we are able to give you um, statistics on how everything from, from a side, from the VPNs that have been set up, from the devices, how is it performing for you? So what we're trying to say is, you can be able to leverage this SD-1 solution at any location using whatever form of transport is available, and you can build up on top of it additional services. So this provides you with a predictable application experience, and you have the right security at the right place. And because today, especially when we are talking about a multi-domain uh, architecture, you can be able to extend your policies all the way from the campus and into the cloud. To look a bit into the solution components of this um, platform, uh, this is how it looks. Uh, we bring in three controllers. These are the VSmart, the VBond, and the, v, uh, the, the VH. So the VH is a data plane. This is your routers, uh, the devices that participate um, in the routing within the SD1 platform. Now we also have the control plane that is a VSmart controllers. This is the one that acts as a brain uh, because um, the edge devices share their routing tables with uh, VSmart controllers. And, and in this case, it makes it very easy, especially where two devices need to communicate with each other. So they very easily uh, establish uh, and uh, tear down uh, the IPC tunnels to enable communication. Of course, the management, the vManage is a dashboard that we use for configuration. So in this, we usually use the overlay management protocol. This protocol is the one that helps uh, the VH to be able to communicate with the VSmart, be able to share the route as well as receive application aware routing policies, et cetera. So that is the main protocol that we leverage. However, on the data plane, you can still enforce the traditional routing protocols such as BGP, OSPF, EIGRP, and so on. Now, in terms of the controllers, just mentioned that we have three controllers. They can be deployed on premise or in the cloud. So in the cloud, you leave it up to Cisco, we provision them for you and just give you access into them. However, for on-premise, you will have to be able to set up um, the virtual environment for us to be able to set that up. And we recommend um, deploying uh, at least two vSmart controllers because that's what holds um, the routing tables um, for the, that have been shared from the VH device, from the edge devices, from your data plane. And uh, it can also be deployed in different data centers uh, to ensure high availability. Now, uh, in terms of the portfolio, we do have quite a broad portfolio that you can leverage um, from the traditional routing, the ISR 4000 series, as well as the new uh, routers that we have today, the Catalyst 8000 series. So with, if, if any of you has the older routing platform, you can be able to easily re-image that router, license it, and you can be able to start leveraging SD1 capabilities today. With the new routers, they ship in with um, SD1 license. So that means from day one, you can be able to turn on and enjoy this capability. So as you can see, we do have quite a huge portfolio that you can be able to leverage. Uh, in addition to this, there are also other capabilities, uh, other platforms that we have, uh, and this allows you to be able to have what we call NFV, Network Function Virtualization. So ideally with these platforms, you can be able to virtualize different functions. So you can virtualize your firewall, your switch, your router, and so on. And still on these devices, we can be able to um, configure them uh, to enable you to be able to leverage um, SD1 capabilities. So in a nutshell, these are the capabilities that a Cisco SD1 uh, solution provides to you. We will enable you to be able to use whatever form of transport is available and even be able to help you cal calculate your return on investment should you choose to you know, um, maybe consider uh, one primary MPLS link and probably another form of transport um, for the secondary. And all these will help you. You can use, uh, you can load balance, you can dedicate specific links uh, for specific transport, tra uh, specific applications. So we are able to give you the flexibility to be able to use whatever links that is available uh, as you please. So with these capabilities, uh, you'll be able to enjoy uh, all these benefits that come uh, with the SD1 solution. Thank you. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25? In 50? Let's be here and here with her and him and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. 
Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house, zero carbon, zero waste. Because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Awesome presentation there from Lucy. Actually, a bit too technical for me. Yeah, but I'm sure you guys are okay with it, okay? You guys, you guys, you know, you know everything. So you, you, you're good with that. Uh, so we are now in the, I call it Kitimoto. No, but it's, it's just a discussion. Yeah. So, so Flo and Paris, it's a discussion. So we're having a conversation with you. Yeah. Okay. And this conversation is not about the elections. It's about SD1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now I want, I want us to, Guys, audience, please, 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 uh, let's have your questions. Uh, I can see Dennis Carey. I can see Naveen. Uh, who else is here? Alexander, Samuel Opai. I can see Victor Ongeto. Hey, Victor, how are you? Uh, I can see who, who else can I see? I can see Sammy Mwinzi. Yeah, Julius, 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 oh, Julius, my boy. Jubilee, how is Jubilee doing? Yeah, I can see a lot of people here. So, guys, let's ask questions. I don't want you to leave. I don't want you to leave this place uh, with a lot of questions in your mind. So let's 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 clear them out. Okay. So let me let me start with you, Paris. Uh what is what is the relationship between DTE? And Cisco, what, what, why, why do you have that relationship, and what it is? What is it? Okay, so essentially, uh, DTE is one of Cisco's technology partner. So we have at DTE, we have an ecosystem, like I said before, different solutions that we offer tied to the different vendors that we partner with. So DTE is a tier one partner with Cisco, and uh, we are currently a Cisco premier partner, but working actively towards becoming gold. So what that means is at least we'll be able to offer more solutions within uh, with better pricing for our clients, which means it trickles down. And again, uh, we are one of the three top uh, three top partners, mm -hmm. but with Cisco rightly in Kenya. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and you also guys... remember that uh, it's a channel program. So okay. Cisco as the original equipment manufacturer, and then we have our distributor, then DT as the reseller. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So do you do just resell, or you also do the integration we do everything so first of all we'll do the resale now the equipment from cisco but the deployment the setup and configuration will be done by us mm -hmm. in case they already have uh, some of this uh, equipment within their environment we'll do the systems integration and then they are after offer post implementation support and an sla just to make sure that our clients are always covered okay yeah okay awesome awesome flow why should I opt to go the SD one way? Uh, I don't see why you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us are using the internet, and as I discussed, um, we have a lot of um, currently the usage for internet is at its high level, and it's going to go even higher. We've got so many devices that are connecting, and the way we used to do it before, uh, right now, is not cost effective. It's mm -hmm. not also efficient because if you're backhauling everything to the to the um, to the MPLS to the headquarters, like Lucy has said, we get a lot of um, uh, uh, inconsistency in inefficiency, and some applications actually suffer. Then productivity in your organization suffer. But if you implement SD one, you can have even five. You can have three, uh, four types of of links that you connect to the branches. You can have a Cicle link, you can have a 4G link, you can have you can still maintain your MPLS, but at a lower usage, and you can also have uh, the internet. So you can have your customers connecting, not customers, your your employees or customers from the branch connecting directly to the cloud. 
or to the internet, which makes it more efficient even for application. Even your your users will be more productive when you do that. Okay. So so tell me, I, I want you to explain this to me. Yeah. Like a two year old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like a two year old. Yeah. I have my network. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to go to SD1. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? Um, you have your network right now. And yes. So uh, let's start. Let me give you an example of Cisco. If you have a, you've been invested in networks, that yeah. one we agree. Most customers have invested. Everybody in has a network. They have invested yeah, in yeah, networks. Yeah. 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 The good thing is, um, if you have the current routers, they support SD1. So you just need maybe to upgrade an image, and you can configure your SD1 rules and. You're good to go. The so, only thing you need to add is maybe an, a, a, a software layer for controllers, and those can be done now on a virtual machine. By so, virtual machine, I mean you have a server already also yeah, you've invested yeah, in. Yeah. So you just provision a server there, and you can run the images. So, so I don't, I don't have, have to, I don't have to approve my network no. and, and build a new network. No, not unless you have money. I had a client who told me. <laughs> He told me money is no issue. Okay. I had a very good time doing okay. the design for that customer. So. Okay. But if, if if budget is an issue, and if you already have a mature um, mature uh, ecosystem or would I say what infrastructure mm -hmm. as DTE, we are, we are here to make sure that we integrate whatever you have to the SD one and advise you accordingly. You saw that when Perez was was presenting, we have advisory services, mm -hmm. so we are considered trusted advisor for Cisco. In my department, the question you asked her, I have 24 certified engineers, mm. of which are solution architects, mm. will give very good advice. I have two in-house CCIEs, so I'm good to go. So, so one of the one of the biggest problems, um, and I can see some questions are coming. Uh, bring them, bring them, bring them. Um, one, one of the thing I talk to a lot of CIOs, I talk a lot to a lot of network admins, and one of the biggest challenge they have is actually to convince the CFO, the CEO, to give them budget to do these kind of things. How how can they present this uh, as an opportunity to the business? Um, I think when we're looking at the CSOT, what they're looking back, what they're looking mostly is maybe a return on investment mm -hmm. and how much money they're saving. Luckily, according to IDC, the research they did on Cisco. If you implement Cisco SD1, I'll be giving you back money. And it's not small money. Mm -hmm. It's about 14.98 uh, USD, uh, million USD, which is actually for bigger organizations. Mm. For the small organizations, let's say enterprise level customer who's not so big, I'll still be giving you millions back because MPLS links are not that cheap. Mm. And as decentralizing um, security to bring it to the branch and even access to the branch, um, makes it even better because mm -hmm. you don't have to buy all those bigger boxes for the central for for the central security at the at the HQ. Mm -hmm. We've not even talked about productivities for your employees. Mm -hmm. You make them happy and they go home happy, mm -hmm. and they can also work from anywhere. <coughs> okay, okay. The list is endless. Paris, tell me. Mm -hmm. You know, you you guys are you you have a regional um, coverage. Yeah. Where are you seeing, like, which industries do you see uh, uptaking these kind of technologies across the region? So I'd say the first thing is you have to check on the clients who have, like, multiple branches mm -hmm. within the country or even outside Kenya. Mm -hmm. And then they have a wide branch network. So you'd think of things like the FSI sector mostly, mm -hmm. banks, insurance companies, and circles, where, like you had presented, we, I showed you, we service currently have a contract with NBK. So mm -hmm. they handle like, we handle all the 88 branches. So you see all those branches around the country. So that industry, I, I think there's a lot of uptake of FD1. Okay, yeah. okay. So guys, uh, I've got a few questions that have come in, uh, and we are, I think, a minute to go. So please just don't stay put. Uh, give me another five minutes to go through these questions and, and then we, we, we can end this session. So there's a question from, okay, this is more of a comment question from Victor Ongeto. SD1 is an expensive affair for SMEs, particularly those whose ops and systems are yet to be high tech. 
where would be the best place to begin with Cisco so as to make SD-WAN a reality in the near future? I think that's a discussion we can have, and that's a very good question. We've come across these um, issues where the major issue is budget, like I said before. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a discussion that we can have, Victor. We can look at where you are at, at the moment and come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. You don't have to start with all the branches that you have. So we can do a first uh, deployment, mm -hmm. and you'll still get the benefits of SD one eventually in the end. So, so basically, you can go into into the business. Yeah. Uh, look at what infrastructure is available there. Yeah. Uh, That's part of our consulting yeah. department. Okay. We can all, we can always do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Then Benjamin Miner is asking, how can SD one help companies create create or develop innovative products? For uh, I should. Let me take that. <laughs> <laughs> You're always <laughs> flying, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. So <laughs> that's okay. Though. So um, the SD1 solution for Cisco is built on an open platform, and people are welcome to develop on it. So mm -hmm. that's that's what it is. Okay, so you have a lot of people who are, yeah. who are building stuff on yes, top, yes, of, yeah, on top of, of it. Of the it's platform. built on an open platform. Okay, okay. Then Naveen is asking... Viptela versus Meraki, mm. which is better? Can you mix both on your network? Um, when we look at Meraki and Viptela, uh, the major the major differentiator is how they are they are managed. So for Meraki, it's purely cloud. Mm -hmm. For Viptela, you can have on prem or a mm -hmm. hybrid. So it's all according to the customer. Both solutions are from the same vendor. So person choosing their poison. Okay, so yeah. is it is it a price thing or is it a features thing? Well, what what is the how can you differentiate the two? According uh, apart uh, for the price, we'll always come to the table and talk. So I don't think it will be such a big difference. Okay, yeah. and also just to add on what Flo is saying, uh, the business needs of every partner or client differs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just come and identify first of all what is it exactly you are looking for. Are you comfortable with a cloud setup or hybrid, or what are your reasons for wanting everything on prem? Mm -hmm. And then from there, now we can actually advise you properly on which solution better suits you and mm -hmm. also is cost effective. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Then there's Mark Mark Kihumba. Uh, Mark, I don't know which organization we represent, but Mark is asking, can DTE do a POC? Yes, I'm currently running one with one of our our, our customers right now, so we can do a POC. For we them. can do a POC. Yes, what, yes. what do you need for, for you to, to go into an organization and do a POC? We'll have a, a first meeting with them, okay. find what their needs are. Then we'll have a deep dive session. We'll still introduce more about SD1, tell them more about it mm -hmm. and the different offerings that they are. Then if they give us a go ahead to do a POC, we do a POC. Okay. Yeah. Um Brave Brave Brebna Momania, sorry if I butchered your name, eh? Uh what are the challenges of SD1? Yeah, okay. Hi. I like this because you know there's always <laughs> yin and yang. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. So absolutely. so what are the challenges? Uh I think the challenges of SD1 at the moment, I would say hmm. All right. Hi Brebna. I actually <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with Brebna, so I, I I would expect such a question from him. So the challenges of the SD1 would be maybe if you but there is a solution for it. Okay. Let's look look at the uh, Viptela. Viptela, you need high skilled people. For Meraki, you don't, because uh, Meraki actually preaches that they want to reduce your IT force, uh, your IT workforce. So I think the the biggest challenge would be the uptake of the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe people who've not used it will feel that it's a a huge learning curve. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you'll still learn. Plus, when we go to a customer who has that, that they, they don't have uh, the skills required to run this, DT can do that for them, mm -hmm. which will uh, will take away from my promise of reducing cost because now you'll have to pay me for <laughs> professional, but then, services. professional services. Okay. But we can still uh, uh, we can still um, propose Meraki that it's quite easy to learn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Joseph uh, Kisavi uh, is asking, for those who are already of, on uh, MPLS, 
across branches, what will be the three greatest selling points for them to switch to AC1? Uh, three. Three, three selling points. Yeah. Number one, cost reduction, because mm -hmm. now you can add another link that can be load balance between MPLS, plus you can decide I'll only use MPLS for applications that are hosted mm -hmm. at the DC, direct internet access for the other things. So the next thing would be um, productivity, mm -hmm. because users, when you when you add more, when you 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 backhauling to the MPLS, it it's latency is higher, of course, mm -hmm. unless you have those very expensive links which comes back to the cost. So there will be more productivity and maybe better productivity for for the customers and um, the last one i would say hmm. effectiveness since they are it's centrally managed yes yeah. and efficiency so, you know you that. even release some of your administrators to concentrate on other projects mm -hmm. that are not time consuming since already now everything is under one uh, centrally managed place mm. yeah. and there's also visibility Visibility. Yeah, that's what I, was, okay. that's what I was looking at. There is a visibility to see how how you're utilizing your links. Okay. Yeah, so that you can know I used up to this much for MPLS. Mm -hmm. My ISP is overcharging me. Mm -hmm. So that is another way of saving cost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Uh, so there's a poll. Please take the poll. Uh, what to be? What to be? Or is your organization's major consideration when it comes to SD one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is uh, your organization's major consideration when it comes to SD1? Please, please tell us. I uh, would, would like to know that. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this uh, session. You know, you know, these sessions sometimes, there's so much to talk about. There's so much information that, you know, we can, we can all share. Uh, but you know we we can't we can't have a whole day yeah, about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, Wish you had the whole day. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but we've we've had really good presenters and good discussions and good presentations. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank uh, you truly, truly us. appreciate mm -hmm. you having here. Yeah. Um, but also really, really appreciate uh, the the sponsorship from from uh, from Cisco and from DTE. Uh, it's it's through your sponsorships that that we can do these kind of things. Uh, to educate, to you know, to network and and share knowledge. So I want to give my guests one second each. You know, Twitter. Can you do a Twitter size last minute remark? One hundred and forty. Yeah, I think nowadays it's two hundred and something, two hundred and eighty characters. Characters, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you for having us here. Make us your partner of choice. Paris. Uh, Western Jaguars, you can find us locally, come watch a match, and you can visit us in Lovington. Awesome, awesome, Thank awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope, I hope that you got something from here and that you'll be able to make informed decisions on your, on your next uh, project. Uh, thank you so much and have a good afternoon.